Let your glory fill this earth, Lord. Uh, the beauty of your ways, Lord. Let your presence overwhelm and fill all thanks and begin with me. Hallelujah. You've begun with me. Rule sovereignly. Rule sovereignly. Take your power. Come Take your power. Come rain. Rain sovereignly. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Reign sovereignly over me. I yield myself to you, Lord. Reign sovereignly over me. I yield myself to you, Lord. Reign sovereignly over me. Take your power now and reign. Reign, Lord, reign. Take your power. I yield myself to you, Lord. Roll over me. I yield myself to you. Roll over me. Father's listening to you right now. He's seeing, behold, he's looking. I yield myself to you. Reign over me. Lord, have it your way. And only your way. Lord, lead me in your paths of righteousness. Reign over me. Hallelujah. Reign over me. I love your rule. I love your rule. Reign over me. Thank you. 
thank you, Father, for this wonderful privilege of knowing you. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray in the name of your holy child, Jesus. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ who has been exalted above all things. Hallelujah. Father, that tonight every single person standing in this place would come under your sovereign rule and authority and live out the rest of the remainder of their life, O oh God, fully for you. Living in that wonderful presence, living in your wonderful power, living in your wonderful glory, walking in your holiness and righteousness, living in the fire of your presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Everybody say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Ha ha ha. He can master Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brong John Deng Lang Dur Staramara Bengalish Pirasato Yelemengata Yerebe Prepe. Ha ha ha. Hallelujah. So Braboko Rimanje K Tor Stoke Mana. So Baki Dere Nana Mandele Bebera Betala Bashoko Mamre Bekilish de Pray. Right now, take a drink. Take a drink. Take a drink. Of this water of life that Jesus Christ has to give. And let that wonderful glory of heaven flow right up out of your belly. Flow right up out of your innermost being. Sarabaki sarabari baro mandebli bara. So turi dare memele mandere sarabako tori bala bayara. Non dor stara name. Non dor stara makaha. Non dala mingeli pedara sele. Hallelujah. Saka rimanga tata ye be rebe frabatu frabota. Sati katego sateke gama makataya. Sapo kona manenena. Sati tata yolo mungate. Sati karema patarada. Sati arobo banane. Sata yolo kopaya. Sapra popana pai. Sati e ebe o popate limombate kumanasato rumombe o parehe. Oh, prepare your potosso. Oh, prepare the mosotea tana maketo. Site rimangeculo mangata. Sati e satura mombate o se prepe manahate. Oh, zigare di taranaya. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ha ha ha. Woo! Saya e to your mana. Saya poro ma pape. Saya lo mokopati sarapapayo. Paye le pa. Paye le kupaye yo po shoyo po shataya. Ay vito yo paufra. Sate no ma. Saya lo manke shete. Rafi so. Rafi so. Rivere mo ma. Rivere mo sikina. Saya po mande kasa. So father let your glory fill this earth. And the water that covers the sea. Lord, let your glory overwhelm all the people of this place and of this region. Oh God, let your presence fall with power. Let your presence fall with glory and authority. Father God, we pray. Sari bato yolo bopa. Chamange o manandera. Hallelujah. 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 Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. You can be seated. You know, a lot of people don't realize this. Is what happened when the mantle fell from heaven. <laughs> Begin to come out of the bellies of those whom the power of the living God had fall, fallen upon when the mantle from on high fell. <laughs> Hallelujah. An overwhelming authority of heaven was given unto men, the same authority that Jesus Christ himself possesses. 
He took all that Father gave to him and poured out upon you and me in an unlimited way, giving to us the same Holy Ghost that baptized him on that day when the Lord gave him the Spirit without measure. The Lord now in His grace and His mercy calls old men everywhere and says, Come and take a drink. And if you drink of this water of life that I have to give you, the Lord said, Out of your innermost being, out of your belly, shall begin to flow these rivers of living water, these rivers of the Holy Ghost. Out of your innermost being should begin to flow and function all these things concerning the divine graces that belong to the ministry of Jesus. <laughs> You know, when Elijah tossed his mantle over upon Elisha in uh, 1 Kings chapter 19, a grace fell upon Elisha. A grace to take a hold of an opportunity now to walk into an anointing that, well, only a couple of people in the whole history of the Old Testament even had. Now God's made a way for everybody, no matter who you are, no matter what kind of rascal you've been. Now, rascal is a special word in Papua New Guinea. Rascal doesn't really mean much around here. Doesn't matter what kind of person that you've been. Father has made a way for us to be washed and to be cleansed and to be made new. He's made a way for for us to escape completely out of the bondage of every influence of the demonic, which is everything unlike him, and step over into his life, and his life is the light of men. His life is the only light that lights up a dark world, and if his life is not there, then the the world is in darkness. His life is the light that lights every person that comes into the world. Jesus said, if you follow me, you should not walk in darkness, but you shall have the light of life. And that light, once again, is the very life of the living God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And poured into us, poured into us by the love of God, poured into us by the power of the Holy Spirit. God not only washed away our sins when he died for us at Calvary's cross, But after having raised up on the third day, he gave to us the power and privilege of having resurrection life. He created our bodies. And so, as our creator, he's also our healer. He then redeemed us, not only from ultimately an eternal death, but right now he redeemed us from a spiritual death. He is our Savior, hallelujah, and thus has given us a life everlasting. Now that life is is the very life of God. It's the life of the Son. He that has Christ Jesus has life. A lot of people have been born into religion. But when you're born... Of God. You have made a new creation. Everything old is passed away. And everything that belongs to heaven comes in and fills you up. Hallelujah. God gives us a new heart and gives us a new spirit. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Everything old has passed away, ceased to exist. I can demarcate religion and relationship quickly. Those who have religion, they come and try through ritual to approach unto God and try to interact with Him. Those who have relationship, as soon as they begin to pray, they feel and experience the tangible, manifest presence of the living God. Out of their belly flows this wonderful life of God. People tell me all the time they saved and that they have the life of God and they don't know His love. I'm telling you, right now you listen to me, somebody's pulled the wool over your eyes. Somebody's deceived you because as soon as you're born of the Spirit, you're filled with the love of God and it's the love of Christ which passes knowledge and Paul said when you know it, you're filled with all the fullness of God. That's what he said. I'm going with the Bible. I'm not going with Christian philosophy. I'm going with what God has to say and when you believe what God has to say, faith comes and your life changes. 
Somebody says, well, what's wrong with my experience? Well, I want you to understand your experience needs to be conformed to the Word of God, and it's real easy to get a change if you need one. The Lord made it really simple. He said, call upon my name, and I'll answer you. He said, call upon me, and you'll be saved. The very name of Jesus means the one who saved us from our sins. You should call his name Jesus, for he shall save you from your sins. That's what Jesus means. Hallelujah. And to, tonight, we want you to know this abundant life. This is the life of God. This is the life of the Spirit. This is a life that is undiminished, undiminishing. It's everlasting. Hallelujah. It's eternal in the heavenly realm. And I'm in the heavenly realm right now. You, I know you see me here, standing here on this, this address on Carroll Canyon Road, but I'm in the heavenly realm because I've been born of the Spirit. Christ Jesus lives and dwells and abides in me. I'm his and he is mine. This is the faith that overcomes the world. The Holy Ghost walks in me. Hallelujah. Sees through my eyes, talks through my mouth, touches through my hands, walks through my feet. Be the very temple of the living God. Hallelujah. This is the experience that God has for you. You've got to be willing to take a hold of something far better. He has a better life than the one you've been living. All you have to do is call upon him and he'll give you the very quality of the life of God. I love it when Moses stood there before the presence of the Lord and asked Father, said, I want to see you in all of your glory. And Father said, I'm going to let you. And at first, of course, he said, you know, if you, anyone tries to see my glory, they're going to die. Uh, you can't see me, you'll die. He said, no, I don't care, basically. Let me see you. Uh, I don't want to live if I can't see you. Uh, hallelujah. Praying John Hyde, who captured a nation called India. Captured a nation that had been held in bondage for 2,000 years, almost said, Lord, give me the lost or I'll die. That's the way he prayed. He'd rather die than not walk on the water with Jesus. He'd rather die if he had to somehow live in an earthly realm when the heavenly one was available. A.B. Simpson, who's the founder of the Christian Missionary Alliance Church, he had a similar experience. Said, heaven is Jesus, and Jesus is mine, so I'm living in heaven right now. It's not a religion. It's not an ideology. It's not concepts. It's a living, tangible manifestation of the very presence and power of God. When you pray, your prayer will change. The sound of your voice will change. Joy overwhelms you. The Lord said, Jesus said, when you drink of this salvation... Out of your belly, out of your innermost being begins to flow unlimited expressions of the Holy Spirit. I don't believe a salvation that does not have unlimited expressions of the Holy Spirit. Because that's what Jesus said. And there, I'm going to tell you right now, everybody's got their books and everybody's got their opinion and everybody says they're right. The Mormons say they're right. The Jehovah's Witnesses say they're right. Uh, the Hindus say they're right. The Buddhists say they're, they're right. The Orthodox Jews say they're right. Everybody says they're right. God's right. And everybody else is a liar. God's right. What Jesus preached in the sermon that he ministered is correct. He said, you drink of the life that I have to give you. John chapter 7, beginning in verse 37 through 39. You can read the sermon. And out of your belly will begin to flow rivers of living water. This spake he of the Holy Ghost, which was not yet given, for he was not yet glorified. And the day that he was glorified and exalted to the right hand of the Father, this wonderful grace and glory was poured out upon the church so that they all begin to speak with other tongues as the Holy Ghost gave them utterance. And then Peter, standing up after having given his address to those Jews that were standing there that day saying Jesus exalted by the right hand of the Father has poured forth that which you see and hear and so when you take up John chapter 7, verse 37 through 39 you've got to immediately go to Acts chapter 2 and verse 33 to get a completion of the story when he threw his mantle upon us 
the Holy Ghost and fire came. That's how Jesus, that's how Jesus transferred his ministry. Isn't that wonderful? He said, he said in John chapter 14, 20, he said, In that day you shall know that the Father is in me and that I am in you. And I have a question for you. Has that day happened to you? When that day happens to you, then you'll know that Jesus Christ is in you. And Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ has the Father in him. And to my goodness, he said, the Holy Spirit's not only with you, but shall be in you. My, wow, what the fullness of the life and power and glory of God's come. I have to just believe. Same thing goes down with sickness and disease. All you have to do is believe. Amen. Now, you know, the very, the very heart of Romans and Paul's expression of salvation in Romans 10, 10, he said, with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. Well, I discovered in this day and where seducing spirits and doctrines of devils are allowed to have their boast, that people have a confession where they believe in their heart unto unrighteousness. Well, that's actually an antichrist spirit. Anything that turns the word of God around and makes it opposite is demonic. Jesus said, with our heart, or rather Paul said, as the minister of Jesus, with our heart, we believe unto righteousness. Didn't say unrighteousness. Said, we believe unto righteousness. He, the same Paul said in Romans chapter 6 and verse 22, he said, now that you have been set free, made free from sin, you the servants of God, and you have your fruits unto holiness, and the end thereof, an unlimited, immeasurable, everlasting life. Now, I know I have a different salvation than many people. I'm not ashamed of it. I have the salvation that is talked about in the Bible. I have the salvation that many people today stand in. You know, Reinhardt was saying the other day, he said there was, well, about 50 people down there in that little place, in that, uh, in that little meeting on Azusa Street about 100 years ago. And today they've turned into about 600 million in 100 years. 50 to 600 million. That's rapid growth. What's going to happen over the next... Ten years. His father's going to speed everything up. And he wants you to come into this wonderful glory. See, John, John was Jesus' cousin. And uh, did you know that, John the Baptist? He was Jesus' cousin. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, about six months older. You read the Christmas story. And... Um, he came declaring Jesus. See, he knew him after the flesh, but he didn't really know him after the spirit. One day heaven was open, and he got to see who he was. Oh, there, there he is. Yep, that's what the rumor was. Yeah, that's what mom said. That's what everybody said. He's the son of the living God. Incarnated into flesh. Who took on the robes of sinful flesh. Amazing. He became everything like we are so that we might become one with him. That's what the Bible says. If you ever read John chapter 17, verse 22, it shouldn't shock you. It shouldn't make you feel bad. It shouldn't intimidate you. God loves us so much. He said, listen, what am I going to do for you? He said, Father, the same glory the Father gave me, I give it to you. Wow. What, what's the glory for? So that we may be one with him, just like he's one with the Father. See, I embrace that. That's why I have a different salvation than most people do. I accept what Jesus said. I call it mine. You cannot please God without faith. And faith, is a, faith comes because we hear the word of God and believe the word of God and begin to step out and act upon the word of God and supernatural supply comes to us directly by the Holy Ghost who fills us up with faith. Faith is something supernatural. It's powerful. It has the means to, to, it has the means to move mountains out of the way, create impossible scenarios like having trees transplanted into the ocean. So you say this tree be plucked up to the roots and planted in the ocean and it must, must obey you. Obey me. Wow. All Joshua did was say, Moon, stand still in Gibeon. Son, don't budge in Agilon. So he said, then get down on his knees, said, oh God, you see we're in a terrible situation. 
And we're asking you, please come and help us quickly. I mean, we got the enemy on the move, and it just doesn't seem right that we should stop now. Because we can finish this thing if we had just a couple of more hours. No. God gave him an anointing. When he saw the glory come down from heaven and rest upon the tabernacle that took place that, we re that is witnessed in Leviticus chapter 8, Scripture says he didn't depart from the tabernacle. He was captivated by the glory. That's what happened to me. When the Lord Jesus Christ took hold of me. Now, my daddy's a preacher, and my goodness gracious, I've been baptized a hundred times. <laughs> Maybe more. I, was, I went up to the altar at every meeting. Every baptism service, I was there. But, you know, there was one day where I, as a, an adult person, an older person, had an encounter with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Wow. How wonderful. I didn't see him like Paul. I just had an encounter with him. I had an encounter with his presence. I had an encounter with his love. I had an encounter with his joy. I had an encounter with his peace. I had such an encounter that everything about life was redefined for me at that moment. I had gotten a little carried away with music and was doing a lot of things in music, you know, as a young teenager because the Lord had gifted me with the ability to write songs and play a lot of different instruments when I was, when I was 14 years old, you know. And so I got a little distracted with that. Of course, most of those people that you see out there in, in entertainment land, they learn how to sing in church. Many of them, their daddy is preachers. They, their anointing came upon them, and they've taken their anointing, and they've gone after, they've sold out for the world. Sold out. And what, 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 makes, the, what makes them attractive, why people want to listen to them? It's because of the anointing that came upon them from heaven. Now they've traded the whole soul for. Wow. I praise God that somehow in His grace and His mercy I find myself here. I tell you, I'd rather be a doorkeeper, hallelujah, in the house of the Lord than to dwell in the mansions of the wicked. I don't want nothing of that stuff. I found Jesus. Rather, He found me and He brought all of His life and treasure with Him. Hallelujah. He gave it to me. He gave it to me, and I, no, I didn't sign up for no stinking religion. I didn't sign up to be sad and sorrowful and down and out and rejected, trying to find my identity in this life. He gave me his own life. As Paul said, if one died for all, then all are dead, that we should henceforth no longer live unto ourselves, but unto him who died for us and rose again. Just as, as he died and is raised up on the, by the resurrection, by the power of the living God, even so you and I are buried with him and raised up so that we might now walk in newness of life. Isn't that glorious? Paul, that, that's what Paul said, you know, in Romans chapter 6. That would be about verse 4. And he said in Colossians chapter 3, he said, if you then be risen with Christ, if you then receive this resurrection life, the inside resurrection life, the new creation life, in other words, where old things are passed away and behold, all things are new. And now all things are of God. That, that life that he talked about there in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17 and 18. That life that he declared to the church at Ephesus in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 24 said, you've been created anew. He's recreated you in His image in righteousness and true holiness. Isn't that amazing? Back to Romans 6, 22. Now that you've been made free from sin, you're the servants of God, and you have your fruits unto holiness. How? Because the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of holiness, has come live and abide and dwell on the inside of us. Woo! <laughs> Hallelujah. That's better than anything that any demon spirit can ever work on you. Anything that belongs to the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the 
pride of life. God's got a better life, and that life was revealed in Jesus Christ. And John said in John chapter 1, verse 4, and the life came and was manifested, and that life was the light of men. She gave us that life and made us the light of the world where we walk around with Father's life, with Christ Jesus' life, with Holy Spirit life. Joy unspeakable and full of glory, peace that passes understanding. It's a choice. It's a choice. You refuse sin. You refuse to commune with demon spirits. You say, Lord, I come to you for sanctuary. Holy Ghost, you are my master. I will follow you. I will be taught of you. Paul said, as many as are taught of the Lord, as many as are led by the Holy Ghost, as many as walk in the Spirit and live in the Spirit, these are the children of God. These are those who have been born of God. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Hey, I can make it. I could ratchet it up a lot hotter for you. But I'm not going to do it tonight. I want to take you further than you want to go. I want to just take you here and let you behold this beauty of God's loving kindness and tender mercies that's been poured out upon us freely. I want to ask you tonight, has that day come for you, that day which you would know that Christ Jesus is in you? Paul said to the church at Colossians, Colossians 1, 28, he said, declaring to the church that we have received this mystery of the fellowship, this wonderful testimony of the new birth, Christ in us, our confidence of glory. Has Christ Jesus come to live on the inside of you? He said also in John chapter 14, verse 24, he said, if you love me, you'll obey me, and my Father will love you, and we will come and make our dwelling with you. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? The, the universe cannot contain him, but he dwells within my life. Ah! He, the universe cannot contain him, but he dwells within my heart. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that glorious? Father, we thank you so much. So many people today are like here tonight a bit in shock. They've not come to know this kind of relationship. They're going, what on earth is this preacher talking about? Can it be so? Has God completely and totally delivered me from a realm called darkness and translated me into the kingdom of the dear son? I love, can I, can I show you some verses of scripture? I love verses of scripture like this. Let me show you a few. And then I'm going to go ahead and preach something I wanted to preach to you. Just I recognize tonight there's some people never heard the gospel here in this place. Never heard the good news that the bondage and time of our captivity has come to the end. That now no longer shall our enemy of death and sin rule over us, but from this day forward we may serve him in righteousness and holiness all the days of our life. And never understood the proclamation of Luke chapter 1, 74, 75, and 76. That's a long chapter. Try to memorize it. You'll remember everything there. You'll remember at least how many verses are there. Of course, the Holy Ghost promised you you'll remember everything there because he said he'll, he'll bring into your remembrance all things that the Lord has spoken unto us. Isn't that good news? Look at this verse of Scripture. Come verse of Scripture with me. Verse, 1 John chapter 2, verse 10. I won't, I'm going to go. When I turn to 1 John, I go light because there's some heavy there. It's the most radical epistle in the Bible. It's the most radical epistle in the Bible. In terms of a transformed life. And I'm not going to get into that night tonight and prove that to you. But 1 John chapter 2 verse 10. Look at this. He that loves his brother abides in the light. Huh? Remember what I said? Remember what, we, remember what he said over there in John chapter 1 verse 4? Keep your finger on that. Go back over to John chapter 1 verse 4. Look over there with me quickly. John chapter 1 verse 4. I just live by the word. Christ Jesus is the incarnate word. We live by him. And every bit of this word testifies of him, the word. Hallelujah. And so we live by it, it the word. Jesus said, in, uh, the, the, um, John declaring uh, concerning Jesus, in him was the life, and the life was the light of men. The life of God is that which shows to men 
God's love. It's the only light in a dark world. It's His life, His character, His attributes, His love, His joy, His peace. As He said to Moses when He passed by, I am merciful, gracious, long-suffering, full of goodness and truth. Amen. Amen. And now He put that in us. Wow. Wow. Put the same love He has in me. But the same peace he has in you. Same joy. Same long suffering. <laughs> same gentleness. Same goodness. Same faith. Same meekness. Same temperance. Same godliness. Hallelujah. Same mercy. Same brotherly kindness. So, John says, he says, if anyone... Verse 10, he says, He that loves his brother abides in the light. That's abiding in the life because it's a love life. It's the love of the Father that was manifested in Christ Jesus. That love comes from the very life of God brought to us by the Holy Spirit. It's the life of the Holy Spirit. And there is no opportunity for him to stumble. Ooh. Why don't you just take a hold of that? Why don't you just recognize that the Holy Ghost will just fill you up with the love? Hallelujah. It's so wonderful to live in. I'm telling you, you'll have a good time every day. You just got to be, be willing to forgive everybody who's hurt you. And that's, that's, that's pretty much blocking most folks' way right there. It blocks people from receiving all these wonderful benefits of heaven. It blocks them out of the blessings. It, 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 it blocks them from receiving healing for their body. They got unforgiveness in the heart. You know, when the Lord Jesus spoke that great faith message in Mark chapter 11, verse 24, he told us that whatever we ask, if we believe we received it, it will be ours. Whatever we say, we, it's ours. That kind of faith he gave to you and me. When we stand praying, whatever we ask the Father, if we believe that we have those things which we have asked for, which we have spoken, they will be ours. And then he immediately says this, but... While you stand there praying, if you remember you have unforgiveness, you're going to have to deal with that because no prayer is going to be heard. He also said if you're waverer, if you're double-minded, you're living in the realm of doubt. If you're wishy-washy, in other words, he says that person won't receive anything from God. If you go speaking guile with your, with your mouth, you speak evil about people, you live in, their, in a realm of suspicion and criticism, he said, my face is against you. That's what the Lord says. He said, he not only said it in Psalms chapter 34, Peter repeated it in his epistle. He said, keep your tongue from evil and that your lips they speak no guile. Depart from evil and pursue peace. For the ears of the Lord, and the eyes of the Lord, both are upon and open to the righteous. He listens, he hears, he sees. He's ready to answer you, but his face is against them to do wicked. I'm not having Papa's face against me. I'm going to repent. If I do wrong, I'm going to repent. Right now, right now, grace reigns over us. An abundance of grace reigns right now. And that grace is teaching us to deny ungodliness. That grace is teaching us to deny worldly lust and to live righteously and godly right now. That's what that grace teaches us. And the beautiful thing of it is... God has made a grace for us that if we stumble, if we trip up, if, because we are not willing to grow up, because we're not willing to do it God's way, because you got all these things going on around you, if you want to keep it right, if you want to be right, what God says what He'll do is this. He'll cleanse us and wash us and forgive us, as it were, 490 times in a day. It says 7 times 70. We say 490 because we, we do the math. But really, it's a Hebrewism that means an unlimited amount of times. <laughs> so long as we forgive one another from our heart, you forgive us. People stop the flow because they hold things against other folks. Oh, you don't know what they did. It wasn't that bad, if you leave me. God commended his love towards you and me while we were yet enemies by wicked works. He laid down his life for us. He valued us more. 
as it were, than himself to give his life a ransom for you and me. The reason that what people did to you makes you feel so bad is because you insecure and you needed them to reaffirm you and they didn't, they rejected you and so that, and that really hurt bad. And so you're living in torment over your own self-image. Get out of it. Get the image of Christ and it won't matter no more. And I know what I'm talking about. I've been a preacher for many years. You listen to me. I started preaching 20, when I was 20 years old. I'm 30, I'm not 35. I kind of wish I were. Some respects. Now I don't want to be 35 ever again. I was stupid when I was 35. No, no offense intended. But, you know, I'm 55 years old now. You know, you look back when you're 35, you go, oh my goodness, I don't want to relive 35. Praise God for 35, but you no, know, you with me? 35 years I've been preaching. You preach for a while, and you're going to get every kind of criticism. You're going to get every kind of rejection. You're going to go through every kind of critique down to men. And in that critique, you'll never pass. I don't think I pass any of the critiques. It's just, it doesn't matter. My life is hid with God in Christ. I, Paul said, if you be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Set your affections on things above, not on things of this earth. For you are dead. And your life is hid with Christ in God. I'm in him. I'm hid away in Jesus. Ha! And I don't want to find me no more. Hallelujah. I'm not living my own life. I'm being taught how to live the life of God. That is a great deal. That is a great exchange. Jesus gave his life for me at Calvary as my lamb, as my sacrifice. He took my place to pay for my sin that I might have his life. That's a great trade. What a great trait. I don't want my life back. I'll take his. Don't let some little silly thing uh, that someone did to you or say to you hold you in bondage uh, in a prison of sorrow and sadness and always down and out. Rather be liberated tonight and be set free. The grace of God is here to fill you up with love. A love that will produce mercy. A mercy that will produce an unlimited source of forgiveness. You won't ever be mad at anybody. If you would be willing to cooperate with us tonight, the power of God that is present in this place will so overwhelm you with love that you won't have to try to love your enemies. It'll be flowing out of you. You'll be looking around from, boy, I wish they here. Yeah, I'd give them a big old hug. Because it would be wiped away. It'd be erased. In the realms of the spirit, it's erased. It's meaningless. It has no value what they did. No value. Only in a human realm of self-interest and sin and pride does it have value. There's no value when you're captivated by his presence and walking in his love. There's no occasion of stumbling. Hallelujah. So, really... Tonight, if I can make it real simple for you, the Holy Ghost wants to be your teacher and, and be your master and train you how to always live every second of the day in the love of God. And there's absolutely nothing more beautiful and more wonderful than that. Now, if you want love and that manifest presence of his love, which is so wonderful, I'm, you know, God has blessed us. We've seen many miracles. I mean... We don't, we don't have to talk about all the miracles that happened long, long ago. We don't have to talk about the miracles of a, of, a, of a baby that was born blind in this church that's now seven years old and many attending physicians to witness of that. We don't have to talk about the miracles that happened uh, last month. These miracles happened today. We've seen many miracles. But the greatest miracles I've seen has been in the atmosphere of his just a thick atmosphere of a greater manifestation of his love where compassion overwhelms you so mm, that it's just undescribable. It's undescribable. And tonight, should you stay with us and cooperate with us and not allow the enemy to distract you and do whatever it is he does to sort you out, you would be filled up with his love before you leave here tonight. And then if, if you would then go ahead and begin to cooperate with that love and just start loving on people, just love everybody, that love everybody around you, hug them. And then, of course, if you've got a problem with somebody, go hug them. 
Some people, it's their parents. They got a problem with their parents. You need to go hug them. It doesn't matter how rigid they are. Just hug them. Because it's for you. And as you participate with what God is doing, if you participate what the, with the Holy Ghost and what the Holy Ghost is doing, then there is a maturity there, an increase. I love Chrissy's new song. Lord, I walk on the water if I get to walk with you. If that's how I get to walk with you, then that's where exactly where I want to walk. That's me. That's the way I feel. I just want to be with them. Who do you want to be with? Ask, I just want you to, I want to ask, I want you to ask yourself that question tonight. Who do you really want to be with? Who thrills your soul, fills you with every good thing? Have you ever found a friend like Jesus? Have you ever found a friend like God? You ever found someone so amazingly wonderful and powerful yet has become your servant and loves you so? He's an amazing, wonderful Savior. Look with me quickly in 2 Peter. I think it's going to be quickly. It could be lengthy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's where I get everything I got. It excels in everything I say, everything I know. Amen. It's the mantle. It's the school of the Spirit. When the Holy Ghost came, the mantle fell. And when the mantle of fire fell that John talked about, I'm going to go back and talk about that a minute before you look at 2 Peter 1. John said he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. And when that mantle fell, the mantle of Jesus, one of the last things Jesus said was Acts 1.5, you will be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days from now. He could have told him exactly when, but he didn't. He said not many days. See, Father, we walk with the Father one day at a time. He knows the beginning from the end. He is the beginning from the end. As far as you and I go, one day at a time, one step at a time. He says, walk that way, okay. <laughs> and if you obey him, it's beautiful. It's wonderful. You got it. Some of you got a lot of things to say goodbye to. Some people take it too long to say goodbye to all that stuff that has been a bondage to you, that has, been a, has wreaked havoc in your life. Saying goodbye to sin, saying goodbye to worldly things and worldly cares, saying goodbye to those things that would destroy you that are offense to the life of God. Jesus is serious about saying goodbye to life, the things that are offense to God's life. He said it like this. He said, if your eye offend you, pluck it out. For it's better for you to enter into life than to be cast into hell having two eyes. That's Jesus' sermon. That doesn't, I don't think Jesus would make it in most churches today. <laughs> he said, if your hand offend you, cut it off. For it's better for you to enter into life and when he says an offense, see, Adam offended God. The offense, Romans 5, 17. The offense, because of the offense of one man, death and sin reigned. The life of God has been given to us, and sin is an offense to it. It says, if your hand offend you, cut it off. It's better for you to enter into life having one hand than to be cast into hell having two. Doesn't fit in a lot of people's doctrines, does it? Said if your foot offends you, if he just keeps on going, look, Lord, we got it. He just keeps on going. If your foot offends you, cut it off. Hey. He loves us so much. He's just trying to help us understand our enemy. Satan goes about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour, whom you and I are supposed to resist steadfast of the faith. Paul wasn't playing any games. Playtime's over. Paul wasn't playing any games. Eh? He said, finally, brethren, be strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of his might so that you might be able to stand against the wiles of the wicked one because we wrestle against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's serious business. People don't realize 
You're up against a formidable foe. He took out angels who had been with Father, beholding Father's face and doing Father's bidding for who knows, an unlimited, undefined period of time. He took them out with his deceptive power. He led them away from God. What's he going to do to you and me? Lest we come over here and walk in this place where Christ Jesus has set us free, where he's the captain of our salvation, where we immerse down into the very presence of the Holy Ghost and God keeps us so that we might be kept. There might be those who say that we are kept by the power of God through faith and the salvation, ready to be revealed. Ready to be revealed. As those who are clothed in white, fine raiment because we were. Wow. That's what Jesus said. That's what Jesus said. Now, I know that's not what you heard on the radio, probably, or read in the book, but that's what Jesus said. He said, those who overcome shall inherit all things, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. I'll be your God, and you'll be my son. He put it that way. That's what he said. That's what the Lord said. He said, those who overcome, he said, I will give them a new name. Those that overcome, I'll make a pillar in the house of my God. Those that overcome, sit down with me in my throne, even as I sat down with my father in his throne. The overcoming power that is here in the blood of Jesus Christ, in this faith of the transformed life, in this walk in the Holy Ghost. We protected. We protected. We're given a grace, but we got to obey. We've got to be willing to be taught of God. We've got to be willing to, be, to want to learn how to live out our lives in this life of God. God's life. Wow. Abundant life. Everlasting life. A life so full of the riches of His grace. My, doesn't that sound wonderful to you? And the blood that would keep us. And so therefore, if we walk in the light as He is in the light, then we have fellowship one with another. You're not walking the light. You're not going to have fellowship. You're going to be walking around separated, sorted out, hurting. Spirit of offense takes more people out of the church than anything else I know. Spirit of offense. It's a demon spirit that works against people because and has its entrance through self-exaltation. Because the Lord's told you and me, we don't have to worry. Huh? We walk with the Lord, we don't have to worry. He told you and me to deny ourselves. Hallelujah. So we obey him. We're good to go. We're set. We're kept by the power of God. Because we're willing to obey him. We're willing to do what he said. He gave us the right counsel. Now, just look with me quickly here. Try not to keep you too long. Is anybody sick in pain right here, right now? Sick in pain? Knocks to key and I make cake in my fluffy. Not talk to us, not day to my day. Now, in Jesus' name, pain goes out of your body. I love you to stay. Sickness and virus, you've got to obey me. You go, leave the body now. I don't want you sitting there suffering while you're listening. I want you to feel good. Sukara, Nikela Kuma, stay. Seek, don't. Just let your hand towards heaven. Feel good now. Feel good now. Feel good now. Be healed right now in Jesus' name. Oh, Prabhatasi. Oh, Prabhupada. How are you doing? You doing better? Doing better? Doing better? Now, how are you doing? I know how Peter preached. Here's how Peter preached. He preached in such a way. Then when they found out he was coming down, they went and got the people out of the house that laid him in the street. They did his very shadow passing by to get healed. I'm telling you, man, that's one radical ministry. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. You have never a reason. You know what? Sickness, just, it, it just, the power of death attacking the life in your physical body. Jesus, he's your creator. You should never have any more sickness in Jesus' name. How'd you like that? Huh? Yeah, in Jesus' name, you'll the sickness goes out of your body right now. From the crown of your head, it shows your feet fever. Go. 
Sulamande. Leka. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Brustaya. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Stiff neck. Stiff neck, sore back. <laughs> Pain goes now in Jesus' name. Nikataya no sope. Now in Jesus' name. We're going to help you some more later. I'm going to finish my sermon. So you know how to get healed, right? It wasn't too long ago, and standing somewhere in the building, got healed, pain, your problem with your arm. Same, well, same Holy Ghost, same healing ministry of Jesus heals you right now. Huh? Sickness, you get out of here. You obey me. You obey me. One day I was in a hospital room, a person laying dead. And I said, in the name of Jesus, get up. Now. And the Spirit of the Lord said, they didn't obey you when they're alive. Why are they going to obey you when they're dead? <laughs> and I tell you, there's, it's connected. It truly is connected. It is connected. But who do you obey? Well, I solo, me and God, mono e mono. That's it. <laughs> no, that ain't the way it works. That ain't the way it works. <laughs> Don't work that way. Amen. You need to come under the rule. But it's a glorious rule. You know how the kingdom of God works? If you, oh, if you love me, you obey me. Huh? Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? So the kingdom of God works off of relationship. The relationship of love. That's how he rules. It's pretty radical, ain't it? I pray you get a hold of that right now. Start living that way now. Don't wait till later. If you wait till later, it's going to be too late. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, people, living in divine health is very easy. It's been paid for and brought to us by Jesus himself. Holy Ghost announces it on a daily basis and shows us the way thereof. A big part of living in divine health is keep your tongue from evil and your lips and speak no guile. It's a big part of living in health. It's true. Living in divine health. Never sick ever again. Man, I want to have a church that doesn't have any sick people in it. <laughs> Hallelujah. If they come here more than three Sundays in a row, and no more sickness in Jesus' name. Gets cut off. You gotta go with sin. Huh? You play around with sin, and sickness to take you to. It's true. But the blood of Jesus Christ will cleanse you from both if you cry out for mercy. Huh? It's true. And then you'll start finding yourself living in his presence. You'll love his presence so much you say, Well, you know, I'm not going out anymore. This is good. I'm staying with you. Lord, I don't want any of the rest of that stuff. I don't want it. I'm not having it. I, got, I love the life of God. Hallelujah. You know, I turn on the television, watch the Chargers games today. I didn't have any problem with the Charger game. Other than the fact that they lost. <laughs> Seems that they can only start playing football in the last five minutes of the game. It's too bad. It's just too bad. That's the way it goes. You know, I turn on the television. And the Holy Spirit's there. The presence of God's there. I see it before me on my right hand. It should not be moved. It's nothing about legalism. I'm not looking to the Mosaic law for righteousness. Nothing about some kind of discipline. I'm walking in a relationship. And if there's something wrong, I get grieved in my spirit. And this joy, this manifest presence of God begins to be violated. I, we're changing the channel now. <laughs> I'm going with God. There ain't nothing. I'm not trading in my garments for some moth-eating rag. I'm not giving up my riches for no empty paper bag. Hey, have you ever seen the ransomed? I tell you, they're a sight to see. All dressed up 
in royal garments and glory. Bought and paid for at Calvary. Uh, I came in through the straight gate, Christ Jesus. I entered in through the door, Christ Jesus the Lord. I'm telling you, there's no place. There's no place like this realm of, of walking with Him. I'll break the power and the strongholds of sin. Every lie and deception of Satan. I render his work powerless against your life. Satan, I destroy everything you're doing right now. And these people that sit here. You obey me. You listen to me. You foul spirit of hell. Leave them alone. Isn't it nice to have somebody around that can help you? He's got to listen to everything I say. These signs follow them that believe. In my name, they cast out devils. I tread upon scorpions and serpents and over all the power of the enemy and nothing can by any means hurt me. <laughs> I just get my wife up in the stadium across the street from a goddess that was worshipped for 5,000 years in a nation held in prison since Jesus died and rose again. She smiles and the devils go. In mass exodus. It's true. True. We got it on film. You can go look at it. That's the power of God in our life. We want you to know this authority. We want you to know this life in Him. We want you to know this beautiful place that has been purchased for us to dwell in. Right here, right here, right now, you and I can find ourselves seated together with Him in His place of power and authority, far above all principalities and powers and mights, far above every name that is named. We want the eyes of your understanding to be open tonight so that you may see the exceeding greatness of His power that was given to you. When Father raised Him up from the dead, seated Him at His own right hand, and poured out to the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Gave the mantle. Well, when Elijah threw the mantle on Elisha, Elisha took hold of it and went with it all the way. His grandfather was Hori. H-O-R-I. Hori. He was one of the twelve witnesses. They came back with an evil report. He blew his opportunity in the day of his generation. His grandson didn't. His grandson immediately responded to the call of God and left everything. What have you done? A greater mantle's come on you. You are a privilege to be clothed with the very life of Jesus Christ. Put on, therefore, the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. Put you on, therefore, be endued, therefore, the very life of Jesus, the very mantle, his same anointing, his same life, a life to say his same life is greater than to say his anointing, his same relationship with the Father and personage. To be one. Be one. It's only possible when you walk in Him, He walks in you. When you live in Him, He lives in you. If you love me, He says, obey me. My Father will love you. Then my Father will love you. Then my Father will love you. Then my Father will love you. And we will come make our dwelling with you. And I will manifest myself to you. That There is no greater thing to live for than Christ Jesus manifesting His glory, His power, and His presence to us. Wow! It's wonderful to come into a relationship with Him in, in such a way that as soon as you begin to pray, His manifest glory comes fiery upon you. And you're already living in a manifest presence, but it even is more intense. As soon as you begin to talk about Him, ooh, the atmosphere changes. As soon as you say, hello, yeah, to the stadium, packed with people, just, hello, everybody, it's so good to be here. <laughs> Woo, and watch it, God does his work. Because Christ Jesus goes everywhere with us. Confirming his word with miracles, but I, I'm telling you, He's confirmed my hello. He's confirmed my hello. Well, I was there in him. You know what I'm saying. And he wants to send you everywhere. In this city, 3.2 million people need to be set free. 
San Diego needs a great outpouring of the Holy Spirit, which will only come as a result of God's people who belong to His church cooperating fully with Him. He's not doing it any other way. It's the way He's done it since the cross. Since the resurrection. Since the day of Pentecost. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we pray in Jesus' name that every person would be able to hear. Every person would commit themselves to walking in the beauty and the splendor. To coming into the school of the Spirit. For the scripture says that the Holy Spirit will teach us all things. He wants to teach us how to walk in this glorious life. He wants to teach us how to walk in the love and the joy and the peace. He wants to show us how to do greater works than these. He wants to show us how to function in all these signs and wonders and miracles. All oh, this demonstration of this glorious person called the living God. What greater thing could you live for? <laughs> Jesus, thank you for your love. Second Peter, I'll show you this, then I'm up. Minister a little bit on. I'm a minister here in just a minute on one day in the life of Jesus. Just a minute. And I want it to be. Every day in your life. God wants it to be every day in our life. Second Peter chapter 1. Peter goes through this wonderful declaration. Declaring to you and I. That we. Right now. By divine power. Has been given everything that pertains to life and godliness. This is the life of God. He that hath the son has life. You have the son. He that hath Christ Jesus has life. That's a better life. He that has Christ Jesus, I possess Christ Jesus. He's in me. That's what that means. He that has the Christ Jesus has life. So, Father, by his divine power, by this wonderful working grace, by this abundance of grace that now reigns right now over us because of his obedience, which is more, far more effective on, on, in our lives and more impactful in our daily lives than the disobedience of one Adam's sin or, or offended the life of God. Father, by his divine power, has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. And he's called us to glory and virtue. He said, the same glory that Father gave to me. He said, actually, he said it this way. Father, the glory you gave to me, I've given it to them. So that we could be, they, they could be one. Oneness in the glory. And he says, then he goes on to say, of course, and that by these we might be made partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And then he tells us to give attendance to the life of God, the virtue of God, the activity of the Holy Spirit. He says for us to focus on that because he says down here, I mean, just to, to, to give ourselves to, this is the way I'm to be, this is the way I'm to live. I'm never to hate. I'm never to have strife. I'm never to have anger. I'm never to have these things in my life. When they try to, when they try to come up through interactions, relationships, issues, circumstances, we go, no, Holy Spirit. Feel me now. I only want to do it your way. I don't, want to, I don't want to be a defender of myself, a keeper of myself, upholding myself. Jesus, you denied yourself. And Holy Spirit, you've come to show me how to deny myself just like Jesus denied himself. And he says, if you do this, look at this right here. If you give all attendance to making your calling and election sure, he tells us. Down here, I'm just going to pick it up quickly at verse 8. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you'll, you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of God. But if you lack these things, you're blind and cannot see afar off. You forgot that you were purged from your own sins. Therefore, brethren, give, instead, give yourself diligently to making sure that your calling and election is established. Hallelujah. For if you do these things, you shall never stumble. Never stumble. Never stumble. Walking over here in this light and life of God. And here's where the Holy Spirit teaches me how to do things that glorify His name. See, the Lord has come, the Holy Spirit has come to lead us in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake because His name's been constantly being polluted among His people. 
Nobody can pollute the name of Jesus or bring offense to the name of Jesus like his people. The lost can't offend, bring an offense to the name of Jesus. All they can do is blaspheme and curse and reject. But God's people misrepresenting him. God hates a false witness. Bringing false witness of who Jesus Christ is and what he did for us when he died for us at Calvary and rose again the third day and stood up on high, poured out the Holy Ghost upon us so that you and I could go everywhere walking in the same ministry, doing the same things that he did, seated at the right hand of the Father, expecting till his enemies may be made his footstool. They're reigning until the restoration of all things takes place. While you and I go to work as his church, his glorious church. Wow. You got some responsibility on you. God's left nobody out. And I, I pray that that isn't too threatening to you. I, I pray that isn't too overwhelming to you because it's a love relationship that's easy. He says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Come follow me. Come take my yoke upon you. Jesus said this to everyone. He says, anybody, is anybody weary and heavy laden? Then come to me and I'll give you rest. You, you, are you tired? You're overwhelmed? Too much, too much load to carry? Too much burden? You tired of the life you've been leaving, living? Come to me. I'll give you rest. Just from sin and self to cease. Just from Jesus now receiving life and rest and joy and peace. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him. How I proved him o'er and o'er. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. All for grace to try. Luke chapter 7, one day in the life of Jesus. Just one day. Just one day in the life of Jesus. I'm doing a book right now on um, the miracles of Jesus. I'm doing a book right now. It's all the miracles, signs, and wonders of Jesus. It's revealed in the four Gospels. But you know, when you get to the end of John's Gospel, as he's the, as he's the author of the autograph and the signer of the first manuscripts which laid out these Gospels that we have to this day. He said, I suppose... That if everything that Jesus did was written down, that the whole world could not contain the books that should be written. So let me show you one day in the life of Jesus. People want to make Jesus' ministry like, you know, it was just scattered and he just did a few things every once in a while. No, he didn't. He went everywhere destroying the works of the devil. He went everywhere healing the sick. And so this really, this gives to us a picture of that. Look with me in Luke chapter 7. I want you to see this. You know, John is in a, in a, in a bit of a pickle. You know, it's kind of like, you know, he walked in the same kind of an authority that Elijah had in similar respects. He didn't call fire down out of heaven. But he had the same kind of passion about getting on with the reign of Christ like Elijah had. And Elijah's passion was so radical about that program that ultimately, as the prophet Malachi said, he's going to come back. He's coming back before the great notable day of the Lord. You read about, about in Revelation chapter 11 where ultimately he's going to stand. he will defend Israel against the, the armies of the Antichrist. Anybody tries to mess with them, fire comes out of his mouth and consumes them. He's radical, okay? Him and Enoch is the way that I see it. The only two people that haven't died because these two guys, ultimately these two prophets are going to be killed. They're going to be slain in the street. And they're going to celebrate for three days. And then right after the celebration is done, Jesus is going to come. Hallelujah. Get with 10,000 of his saints to execute judgment upon all the ungodly, for all the ungodly deeds which they've ungodly committed. That's how Enoch preached. Wow. And... Um, you know, of course, you know, Elijah, he just was all upset because Jezebel didn't get wiped out and the kingdom didn't come after he called fire down out of heaven. But, he, you know, he got, he got straightened out. And here, John's saying to some of his disciples, he says, go, verse 20. He says, 
um, verse 19. He said, go find out. Go, go ask Jesus if he's the one that should come or do we look for another? It's kind of a tough situation being there in prison. I don't know all of the reasons that, that John had this concern. And I would say, really, that it was really a concern stirred up in him by the Holy Ghost so that this event could be sorted out. You with me? Because he's just prophet. Go find out. Is he it? Is he the one that come? Of course, he's got to know that he's the one to come. So when the men then were coming to him from John, they said, John, John Baptist has sent us to you. He said, are you the one that should come or do we look for another? And here's how Jesus proves his ministry. It's how he proved it then. And it's how he proves it now. It says in the same hour. This is one hour. I said a day, an hour. You know, and of course you can take that to where that you make it a day. But if we was real little about, literal about it. In the same hour, he cured many of their infirmities and plagues and the evil spirits and gave unto them that were blind sight. Then this is what he said in conclusion about those Five categories. This is what he said. He said, now go tell John. Go your way and tell John the things which you were eyewitnesses of and which you heard with your own ears. Go tell him how you saw the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers cleanse, the deaf raised, the deaf hear, and the dead raised to life again. One day. One hour. That's all San Diego needs. That's how God preaches his gospel. Paul said in Romans chapter 15, verse 19, he said, I have fully preached the gospel. A lot of people want to claim full gospel. Paul established full gospel in Romans 15, 19. He said, from Jerusalem to Illyricum, I have fully preached the gospel with mighty signs and wonders and the power of the Holy Ghost. Everything Jesus did, did by the power of the Holy Ghost. Did you know that? ha. <laughs> When he was about 30 years old, the heavens were open and the Holy Ghost came upon him in an unlimited way and he was baptized there in the Holy Spirit. And then that's when the miracle ministry began. He went everywhere destroying the works of the devil, killing everyone who was sick and everyone who was diseased. Father, I thank you right now in Jesus' mighty name that You've brought a group of people here together who's not going to live in doubt and unbelief. They're not going to be wondering. You know, if you're wondering, if you're wondering, if you're in disbelief, we can understand that. Look at the 12 apostles who were with Jesus. And, well, especially the 11 who were with Jesus. And there they are after that he's been crucified. They're in disbelief. They're wondering, uh, can these things possibly be? When the women came and told them about the resurrection of Jesus, they were perplexed. Peter has his great event of stooping down and wondering. <laughs> looking, into the, looking into the empty tomb. But, and then he went and hid out in the room for fear, just in fear, wondering, wondering and in fear. But when the power of the Holy Ghost came upon him, he left out of the room. He was no longer wandering in fear. He was no longer in doubt. But now being baptized in the Holy Ghost, he went out, preached a sermon that turned the city upside down. And from that day forward, he lived a life of the miraculous. Tonight, there's an opportunity for anybody who's willing to step over into this light. Are you willing? God beseeching you, pleading with you. Holy Spirit saying, I want to teach you. I want to show you how. I want you to come and walk with me. I want you to be led by me. I want you to understand how to hook up with me. God doesn't want you hooking up with religion. He doesn't want you hooking up with concepts. He doesn't want you hooking up with worldly cares. He doesn't want you hooking up with, well, demon spirits is the last thing on the list. It should never even be. But he that sins is of the devil, as John said in 1 John 3, 7, because it takes a demon spirit to sin. And isn't it good that the Lord still come, as it were, 
bias back all over again. Isn't that amazing? Well, quit that nonsense. Come over here now. Come, let's follow Jesus. Come, let's walk with him. Come, let's be taught of God how to live out this heavenly life. Come now. Come now. Come now. Come now into this realm of glory. Come now into this place with me. Come over here where the joy is unspeakable and full of glory. Come over here and know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. And be filled with all the fullness of God. Come over here, the Prince of Life would teach you. Come over here, the Holy Ghost will lead you. Ah, oh, to all these good things. I want everybody to stand with me. Lord Jesus, now we pray that every yoke be broken. Lord Jesus, now we pray that every unclean thing be removed. I want to just ask you to lift your hands towards heaven. Lift your hands towards heaven. Let Jesus touch you now. Let the power of God come upon you and overwhelm you. If you're, not, if you're not feeling well, lift your hands higher than anyone else. The Lord is faithful concerning all of His promises. He will do the things He said that He would do. All your heart has to be is willing. Just receive right now. Receive your healing right now. In the name of Jesus. Be strengthened by the Spirit in your inner person, in your inner being right now. Be strengthened right now. Be filled up. Be, over, be overwhelmed with this goodness of God. With His love. That He has for you. Take hold of these things. They now yours. Christ Jesus is here. I said Christ Jesus is here. He will heal you. He will save you. He will deliver you. He will change everything about your life. Receive right now. Receive. Receive, receive, receive. Ah. Receive, receive, receive. Receive right now in Jesus' name. Just begin to talk to him to say, I am yours and you are mine, Lord. As you pour out your heart to him, as you worship him, as you give thanks unto him, watch how everything about your life begins to change. Watch, watch as the sickness departs. Watch as the doubt leaves you. Watch as those voices that have overcome your mind, the power of it's broken now. Broken now. 